is King of glory that pursues me with his love and haunts me with each hearing of his softly spoken words. Conscience a reminder. offers it to me. Who is this King of Angels? O oh, blessed Prince of Peace, revealing things of heaven and all its mysteries.
Hosanna to the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear brothers and sisters, from the beginning of Lent until now, we have been preparing our hearts by repentance and self-sacrifice. Today, with the whole church, we herald the beginning of the celebration of the Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem and was welcomed as King with palms and shouts of praise. Today we greet him as our King, though we know his crown was a crown of thorns and his throne a cross. Therefore, I invite you to follow our Lord this Holy Week, from his triumphal entry through his suffering and death to the glory of his resurrection. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you would, hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 21, 1 through 11. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now then, now when they heard, sorry, now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the, on the road. And the crowds that went before him and those that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. We praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph, and was hailed as king by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Now sanctify these branches with your blessing, we humbly pray, that they may be for us signs of his victory. Grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Yeah. 
in normal times anyway, on Palm Sunday, we would begin the service outside. And we would then process inside, carrying these palm fronds. And every year we have done that, uh, year in and year out, as a liturgical reenactment of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's really a pretty cool, fun thing to do, especially uh, with kids. So, let's just plan right now and on doing it this time next year, okay? So in 2021, Palm Sunday is going to be on March 28th. Mark your calendar now, save the date, let's all be here. Now because we do this, or have done this normally every year, I think most of us have got a pretty good idea of what went on that day. But let me refresh your memory just in case. It was Passover. It was the Jewish feast that celebrated God's great saving act, whereby he brought the people of Israel out of, uh, out of Egypt, out of slavery in Egypt. He was going to take them to a land, a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of their own. Well, the Passover remembered that. It was a recollection of that, a reliving of that. And so pilgrims, as many as two million of them, flocked to Jerusalem every year to celebrate this great feast. Which means that there were people everywhere in and around Jerusalem. The city was packed. People camped out on the hills around town. People were everywhere. Which made it easy to attract the crowd. And when Jesus mounted a donkey at the top of the, the Mount of Olives and began riding down to Jerusalem, it was like, like a flash mob or something. People hailed Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah. They threw their cloaks in front of his mount. They, they waved palm fronds and crowded Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It was a welcome fit for a king. Well, that's what happened. And, and, and this morning I want to look not so much as at these events, but I want to take a step back and... Um, look sort of behind the scenes, if we could. And I'd like us to consider a couple of things that are easily overlooked, but which I think might minister to us during these <laughs> less than normal times, okay? Let's take a look. All of Jesus' life had been, had been pointing to this moment in time. All history in fact, um, all of God's plan for salvation was focused on these days. And it was all resting on Jesus' shoulders. It was a big load. It, it was more than any of us have ever had to carry, more than ever any of us will carry, or even more than we could possibly imagine. I mean, I might be able to imagine a little bit of what you're going through these days. And you might be able to imagine a little bit of what I'm going through these days. But we can't possibly imagine what it was like for Jesus as he entered this epic week. How could we? I wonder though, what was it like for Jesus on the night before his uh, triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We can't know exactly what it was like for Jesus, but we can know what he did. On the night before his triumphal entry, before his, the biggest week in his life, the biggest week in history, Jesus had supper with his closest friends. There was Mary and her sister uh, Martha and their brother Lazarus. Uh, and this is recorded in the Gospel according to John. Now Mary and Martha and Joseph were not apostles. They were not hand-selected by Jesus uh, as people who would be sent out into the world to spread the Gospel. 
Now, Mary and Martha and Jesus were just personal friends. They, they, they were more than that, though. They were, they were a family with whom Jesus shared a special bond, a deep, deep bond of love. Now, you might recall on one occasion, uh, Lazarus got sick, seriously sick. He was on death's door. So Mary and Martha, they sent word to Jesus and said, Jesus, come help us. Lazarus is sick. He's going to die. And they knew what Jesus would do. They knew that Jesus would stop whatever he was doing, and he would rush to Lazarus' side, and he would heal him. Or so they thought. But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus delayed, and Lazarus died. In fact, by the time Jesus arrived, Lazarus had been dead for four days. Mary and Martha weren't happy, and they, they told Jesus they weren't. But Jesus said, hold on, just wait. Take me to the grave. And when they rolled the stone away, Jesus declared, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. So given that little bit of personal history, what do you suppose that Jesus and Lazarus talked about at supper the night before Jesus' triumphal entry? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us specifically, but I don't think it's far-fetched to imagine that Jesus asked Lazarus, tell me, friend, you've done this. What's it like to die? Now, remember, all of Jesus' life, I mean, all he'd ever experienced was life because he was eternal. The Gospel according to John tells us in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and life was the light of men. The Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, is eternal. Son of God, second person of the Trinity, is life. But the Son of God, Jesus, incarnate, well, He was going to die in six days. Death was something that was completely antithetical to his, to his being, and it was outside the, the range of his personal knowledge. So why would Jesus not ask Lazarus, hey man, what's it like to die? And why would Jesus not ask Lazarus, what's it like to be dead for several days? And why would Jesus not ask Lazarus, What's it like to be dead one minute and alive the next? I would have asked those questions, wouldn't, wouldn't you? I think any human being would, and that's the point. Sometimes we focus so much on the divinity of Jesus that we kind of forget that he was a human being, just like us, but different. Well, whatever Jesus and Lazarus discussed that, uh, at that dinner, uh, we do know that before the, the biggest, most stressful week of Jesus' life, he needed to be with his closest, most trusted friends. That's what people do, isn't it? That's what we do. And that's what we are missing right now, isn't it? Yes. Thank you, God, for Facebook so we can be together like this. And thank you for Zoom so we can have our Zoom meetings. Thank you, God, and all the rest. But let's be honest. This is not the same as us gathering together in person. All of us need person-to-person -person contact. And in this age of social distancing, well, we just don't get much of that. And maybe we can articulate it, vocalize it, maybe we can't, but I think inside of us, all of us feel like something just isn't right. There's something missing. And I would declare to you 
that all of us are experiencing some relational malnutrition. Well, let me just say that Jesus understands that. He understands it completely. He experienced that. Aloneness, that isolation. And everybody abandoned him as he was dying on the cross. In Hebrews chapter 4, we, we read about Jesus, our great high priest, and how he understands our needs because Jesus lived life as we live life. And it says that we can draw near to the throne of grace and receive help in time of need. So if you feel isolated now, if you feel alone, if you're afraid for the future, not knowing what the future will be, please know this. Jesus understands. And he invites you. He invites you to call upon him. And he will be there. For you. But wait, there's more. Do you remember the donkey? In the midst of all the hosannas and the celebration and all of that sort of stuff, the massive crowd, Jesus was riding a donkey. Now there's no other record in the Bible of Jesus doing it. As far as we know, this is the only time. When Jesus traveled from town to town, village to village, it seems that Jesus walked. What's up with the donkey? Was Jesus tired that morning? Or was he saving his energy for this big week? Or was something more significant going on? Well, about 500 years earlier, a, a prophet by the name of Zechariah uh, lived. And and at that time, God's people, they, they were not thriving as they had hoped, not like they were expecting. And, and people were unhappy with God. They were asking, God, where are you? Why is not life better than this for us? So Zechariah spoke into their lives. He spoke into that situation. And one of the things he said was this. He said, God plays a long game. And while God is interested in the day-to-day -day lives of his people, his great plan will unfold over time. In God's time, God will reorder this world. Now included in that message from, from Zechariah was this. He said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation as he. Listen up. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Well, that prophecy, that was huge in the, in the minds of the people of Jesus' day. They, they were waiting anxiously for, for the Messiah, the Deliverer, to come. And how would they know who it was? The Messiah, the great deliverer, would come to them on a donkey. Now here's the kind of cool part. Do you remember how Jesus procured that donkey? He didn't borrow one from Mary and Martha and Lazarus or any of their neighbors. No, Jesus sent two disciples into uh, uh, this nearby village to fetch a donkey. He said this, he said, go into the village and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord needs them. And he will send them at once. This is, this is mind blowing, it, it, is, it is amazing. Jesus knew that there was a female donkey with a, a, a young donkey that, that she had given birth to, uh, a, a colt, and, and, and they were in this village that was between them and, and, and Jerusalem, that, that this donkey and the baby donkey weren't in a field, they weren't in a pen, they were tied up somewhere. And he knew that that if the disciples went to get that donkey and the owner saw them, all they had to do was say, hey, Jesus needs it. And the owner would say, Jesus, heck yeah, he can have this. No problem. 
So the disciples brought both donkeys to Jesus, and he rolled, rode on the colt. He chose the younger donkey, which had never been ridden, ridden before, just like the prophet Zechariah had said 500 years earlier. So here's the thing. Jesus knew exactly what donkey that he wanted. Now, in, in the villages of, the, of Bethany and Bethpage and then the town of Jerusalem, there were probably tens of thousands of donkeys. But Jesus wanted one specific donkey. And he knew exactly where to find that donkey or where to send his disciples to find that donkey. Jesus didn't prearrange that. He didn't set it up in advance. He, he, he just did it. He knew which donkey he wanted and he knew where his disciples could find that donkey. Well, here's the point. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he demonstrated his divinity. Jesus did things that only God could do. Jesus knew things that only God could know. And here's why this matters. Just as Jesus understands our loneliness and isolation and fear, even our boredom, because he lived life as a human being. So too does Jesus know things that we can't know. He knows what tomorrow will bring. And so as Jesus sat on, on that donkey, looking down from, from the Mount of Olives, his mind had to be filled with knowledge of what was before him. Below him was the Garden of, of Gethsemane, where he would literally beg God for his life. Then came the city of Jerusalem, the city he loved, the people he loved, who would reject him. And beyond the city, on the far side, there was Golgotha, the place of the skull the rocky hill where Romans crucified people. At the top of the Mount of Olives, Jesus knew it all. He knew what was going to unfold over the course of just a few days. And there at the peak of the Mount of Olives, Jesus had a choice. He didn't have to get on the donkey. He could have sent that donkey back. He could have retreated in fear. But he didn't. And one imagines Jesus taking a deep breath, hopping on the donkey, nodding to his disciples, and saying, Okay, guys, let's go. I think it's important in this difficult time, this uncertain time, that we hold fast to something. And that is Jesus got on that donkey and proceeded into Holy Week for us. Just a few hours before Jesus was on that donkey, he, he, he told his disciples, he said, no greater love has anyone that he lay down his life for his friends. The man on the donkey that day, Jesus, loves you in a way with a depth that no one else ever will, no one else ever can. There simply is no greater love. Let me encourage you. Don't let this crisis go to waste. No. Use it to immerse yourself in the love of Jesus. If you do that, anyone who do, does that, well, I'll say this. Life for you will never be normal again. 
even after they find a cure for this virus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you would, join me as we express and declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and Clark, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and, dis and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially for our president. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For family members serving in the armed forces. Andrew, Steve, Keith, Ryan, Chris, Joshua. Katie, Adam, Alex, and Zach. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For medical personnel working to care for the sick and for those searching to find a cure to this disease, protect their health and bless their work that many may be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of His Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now, as those who are forgiven and given to one another, we come to our agape meal. Again, this is a meal that is different from Holy Eucharist. Uh, but it is a meal that is a shared experience of time when we come together as the people of God and we, and with love for, for God, love for one another, um, we delight in His presence and in the goodness that He has given both in food and in drink, but also in one another. So let's pray. 
Blessed are you, O Lord God, King of the universe, for you give us food and drink to sustain our lives and to make our hearts glad through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, if you would, let's join and share this bread and wine and then follow it with a time of silent prayer. Please join me in praying for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, for our preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And let us sing to this God who is King forever with joyful and thankful hearts.
Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Luke. Yes, sir. Um, we've got just a few announcements here. Again, welcome to our Palm Sunday uh, service. We're looking forward to uh, uh, next year when we'll be able to do it uh, again uh, the, the normal way. But in the meantime, I'd like to encourage you to hold on to these and uh, keep them in your sight uh, somehow during the week so you can be very plugged into all of the events that, that happened that led up to the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. It's, it, it's a big week. Now before we get into um, some of the specifics of the things that we'll be doing this week, I want to give a big shout out and thanks to the people who delivered these palms yesterday, sometimes in the driving rain. So uh, we appreciate it. They, they came in, they got their poems, they did their social distancing, and hopefully uh, having these uh, with you has, in a way, uh, made everything more normal, uh, more real, and that you have uh, received a blessing from it. I do remind you one more time that the bread that they delivered is not to be consumed until Easter. Um, it, is, it is communion bread, and the bishop has specifically given us permission and directions on how, what to do, and so we've delivered the bread, but it's not intended to be eaten until we all celebrate uh, an Easter communion. Okay, so uh, let me just look quickly at the schedule this week. Uh, Monday, Thursday, uh, we're having a service at 7 o'clock, and uh, as, as Typically, on Monday, Thursday, we do a stripping of the altar. Well, we're not going to exactly do that, but we will be stripping all this stuff away. Uh, and and, and um, I would encourage you, as you set up uh, for, for uh, Monday, Thursday, uh, do it, you know, seriously and well. And, and, and then we will all take, uh, uh, do the stripping of all this ornamentation, too. Uh, after the, the service, uh, our uh, prayer vigil begins. It's, this year, it's a 62-hour prayer vigil. And um, what, I mean, we need prayer right now. The world needs prayer, and the Daughters of the Holy uh, Cross are putting this thing together. We're thankful uh, to them for that. And if you have not signed up, please do. Uh, Henry, is there a way to sign up on our, our website? Um, can they, is there a link on our website for that? I'm about to put it in the comments here. Okay, so Henry's going to be putting it right now online so you can see it. And you can sign up uh, today. You can sign up right now. You can link to that. And uh, it's, it's always a very, uh, it's a very powerful event. We'll be doing it from home, which will be different but you'll be provided with all the materials, and I promise you, you will be blessed uh, by it. Uh, it will run from after the prayer vigil until 10 a.m. Sunday, Easter morning. Uh, Good Friday service is at 7 o'clock, and that, if you can only go to one service in the year, I really think that Palm Sunday should be it. It's the epicenter of our faith. Hmm? You said Palm Sunday, but Did Good I say Friday. Palm Sunday? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I meant <laughs> Good Friday. Yes. Yeah, see, I, I have Luke and, and Henry to keep me grounded here. Uh, so, yeah, uh, a Good Friday is, is the epicenter of our faith. It's the most important thing. So we're going to be doing a, a Stations of the Cross, a virtual Stations of the Cross. We'll provide you with the materials. Uh, it's going to be very powerful. Uh, do tune in. It's at 7 o'clock. Easter will be Sunday at 10.30, uh, just like this service, uh, only it will be a full communion service, just like we're accustomed to. And that will feel good. At least, you know, I've been missing communion. I don't know about you, but th these things are great, but I can't wait to do communion. Um, now, there will be people that will tune in 
um, to this who won't have, we will not have given communion bread to. So after the service, we will be available for drive-by communion. And so I want to encourage you to invite uh, your friends to the commun uh, to uh, Easter service. Uh, they can watch the service, they can participate in the service, and they can, uh, they can drive by and receive communion just like uh, you will next week. Um, kids, Karen is working uh, like a sled dog to produce really cool stuff for your kids. She showed me some of this stuff last night and it's really neat. And I really encourage you, if you have children, uh, uh, pay attention to what she's doing, use it, because uh, your kids will be really blessed by it. It's, it's, uh, she's called it a Holy Week scavenger hunt. And so all through the week, she'll be sending every day something new for your kids. And if, if, if you're watching this and are not on the, our mailing list, uh, you could go to Karen at graceanglicankatie.com and request the materials. She'll be happy to uh, send them to you. We continue to have a thriving prayer ministry, intercessory prayer, even though we are not together. And if you have a prayer request, uh, you can email it in to prayer at graceanglicankatie.com. Also, if you have a question about faith, God, church, or any of that stuff, send your question into info at graceanglicankatie.com, and, and we'll take it from there. I need to talk to you just briefly about something pretty serious, and we know that this is a scary time for everybody. Uh, and I want to thank all of you who are continuing to, uh, uh, to send your offering, your tithes and offerings in, however you're doing it. Thank you for your ongoing giving. It is hugely important. Um, I must be honest with you that during this time when we're not gathering, offerings have fallen off. And so we need everybody's help on this. Please help us stay, stay strong by continuing your giving. You can do it by mail. Some people like to send in a check. Uh, other people like to go to our website and go through PayPal. That's one way to do it. And the best way, I think, for everybody is through setting up a, a bill pay feature in, in your bank. They will send out a certain amount every week. You set it and forget it, and there's no fees uh, for you or for us. So let me encourage you, immediately after the service, uh, act on this, uh, or you'll forget it. Uh, so go ahead and, and go to PayPal, go to your bank, write that check. It would really help us out uh, a week. Finally, let me again encourage you, uh, tune in 1030 next week. It's Easter, big day, uh, and uh, invite your friends uh, to, to join us. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and to his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. As those forgiven who delight in the mercy of God, let us sing about this great mercy that is more than we can imagine. Yeah.
But riches of kindness he lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cause. We stood neath the dead we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.